thyroid hip rotation, we're mostly focusing on internal hip rotation. Internal hip rotation is super important because our femur rotates inward as we walk naturally. Um, so when we have a deficiency in our hip internal hip rotation, it can shorten our stride, it can cause all kinds of knee problems, uh, it will make your feet turn out, it will cause some knee valgus, so some problems with those knees, um, and then it will also then bump up to hips, low back, pelvis, so it can create this huge chain of issues if it's not addressed. And to start, we're going to do my favorite thing, we're going to do some hip circles. So. You can do these standing or um, on all fours. I'm gonna do them on all fours because I think it's just easier to see that. So we'll start in a nice good tabletop position. Hands right under the shoulders, knees right under the hips. And we're just gonna do three hip cars on each side. So we're gonna start by bringing our knee up to our chest, opening it out as far as we can. From there, we're gonna try and rotate the heel to the ceiling and then push through that heel as if someone is pushing down on your heel. Get all the way back around, finish that circle, and then again, pushing up through that heel, opening the knee out and over, and back to the starting point. You can uh, alternate sides or you can do them all on one side. I'm just gonna do all on my left to start. Good. Imagine that you are moving through mud. So not through air, but through a nice heavy mud. Try to keep those arms nice and tight. Chest is active, back is active. And this is just a little warm up to get our hips going. And then maybe we'll do some more hip cars at the end and see how everything's feeling. Good, switch to the other side. Knee to chest. Open that knee out, rotate the heel to the ceiling, and push up and through. Nice and slow. Ideally, if you're following along, you don't want to finish before me. <laughs> Woo! I am so sore. This is a good exercise to do on a recovery day. Watch that low back. Awesome, good. Shake that out a little bit. All right, so like I said, we're gonna be focusing a little bit more on internal rotation. So we're gonna start with an internal rotation test. And that's just to see how much internal rotation you have. So I'm gonna show you from this direction. I want you to come down onto your back, bend your knees up to 90 degrees, and you're gonna put this toilet paper roll right in between your knees. So what that's gonna look like is here. Make sure that looks good, hello. <laughs> and knees are straight up and down. And then from there, all you have to do is squeeze that toilet paper roll and you're going to bring your foot out to the side, just like this. And you'll notice I say internal hip rotation because as you turn your foot out, your femur rotates internally through the hip socket. And just try that a couple times on each side. Try to notice which leg has more internal rotation. You might find that you get stuck here and you only have maybe 10 to 15 degrees of internal hip rotation. That's not ideal, but it's not uncommon either. Um, most people have a limited amount of internal hip rotation there. Ideally, we want somewhere between 35 and 45 degrees, although most people do not. So um, just kind of get a feel for where you are on that spectrum. Um, no judgment either way. You just want to see where you're coming from so you know which direction to head towards. Um, okay, so if you've noticed that like one side is way harder on your internal rotation than the other side, Maybe focus on that one today. If they're both about the same, if they're both a little bit challenging, we'll just do both legs. Um, okay, so the first exercise we're gonna do is called a sleeper stretch. So we're going to widen the legs, widen the knees, keep them bent to about, what is this? That's 90 degrees, 
like 100 degrees, oh God, geometry is not my thing. <laughs> and I want you to peel your toes up and point them at the ceiling or point them, try and bring them towards your knees. This is a good way to kind of just get your feet in line with your knees. If you have any knee issues, I want you to really work on trying to keep your toes in line with your knees. That way you don't end up in a situation where you have a lot of torque on those knees a lot, or a lot of torsion. Um, okay, so from here, you're gonna sit up nice and tall. And if this is a challenge to sit up tall, I'd recommend sitting back against a wall so you can get your chest up. And from here, we're just going to passively stretch this internal rotation. So you can put some light pressure on that outside knee and then open it back up wide. Other side, light pressure, just to get a little bit of a passive stretch, and then open it back up nice and wide. We're gonna do five on each side. And notice, when this knee comes in, I'm not letting this knee fall out. I'm still staying nice and upright. This is staying exactly as it was before. And open up, got two on each side. You'll notice also that my knee can't touch the ground, so my toe's not gonna touch the ground either. Again, keeping your toes and knees lined up so you don't put any added pressure on your knee. Good, do two more on each side. If you're noticing this is very tight right here, that's fine, just work within your own range of motion. This is also a nice, good passive stretch for your external rotators in this direction. How many have I done? We'll do one more on each side just in case. Good rule of thumb, if you forgot how many reps you've done, always just do one more. <laughs> good, okay. We're gonna stay in this sleeper stretch position or this bear position and you're gonna grab your toilet paper roll and we're gonna do some work in this position. Um, sometimes the best way to work your internal rotation and get some of the sticky parts out of that internal rotation is to actually work your external rotation. Um, when you have, especially if you're, when you're in your internal rotation position, if there's any pain or it's painful. Um, sometimes when that part is painful, if you just, use the opposite muscles, you can break through some of those um, like sticky areas, some of those barriers. So from here, I'm gonna bring the toilet paper roll right to the inside of my foot. Again, staying upright. This might be another uh, opportunity where if this is hard, sit up against the wall because you really do wanna stay upright. You wanna try not to lean back or put your hands back behind you. From here, we're going to lift the leg up and over the toilet paper roll, and then you're going to try and touch your heel to your nose. Ugh. If that, if you can do that, I'm gonna be very impressed. This is about as far as I can go, because you're trying to open this up. But notice, this is my passive range of motion. This is my active range of motion. This is what I can control, and then come back down. Other side, we're gonna do five on each side. Lift up and heel to nose. <laughs> Get, I always grab one hand to the other hand and just kind of create some tension. That way I'm firing all the motor neurons in my body. I don't wanna just fire these outside external rotators. I also wanna get some uh, work through my core, through my chest, through my hands. So do whatever you need to do to kind of work the whole body. Four more on each side. Again, this should be challenging. You should feel intense muscle work, but no pinchy pain. So if you need to adjust so that you're not in any pain, please do that.
didn't go very well. Make sure those toes stay really, really active. Toes up to the ceiling. Don't let everything flop down here. Try and set those feet back down with control. Ugh. Good. Shake that out a little bit. Put that toilet paper roll aside. We're gonna go back to that original sleeper stretch with the internal rotations. And I just want you to try five more on each side and see if you've broken up any of the little kind of sticky areas. Already I'm feeling a little bit looser through my internal rotation. Probably gotten through some of those adhesions. This doesn't mean that you're going to keep that range of motion because it's just kind of gotten warmed up from doing this. But if you did that every day, you would be strengthening that range of motion and you'd be able to keep it. Oh yeah, I can already feel a difference. And it's also just kind of really satisfying to do the opposite thing after a hard thing. Oh, good. Okay. Shake that out a little bit. Ooh. See what time is it? Perfect. Okay. Last, uh, second to last thing, you're going to grab your toilet paper roll again. And we just worked some passive internal rotation with those little internal rotations. Um, we're now going to do some more active internal rotation. So we're going to really fire up the hip a little bit here. Um, if anything feels tight or funky, feel free to get up, move around, shake your legs out, whatever you need to do. You're going to come down onto your side, stack your hips right on top of each other. So make sure one isn't back here or one isn't coming forward. You want to be right on top of each other. You can kind of rest your head on your hand here. And then your toilet paper roll is once again going to go right in between your knees. And then from here, we're going to work on 10 good internal rotations by bringing that heel up as high as you can. Keep your knee bent to 90 degrees and come back down. Good. Come up and really push against your range of motion here as long as there's no pain. I'm gonna hold this steady because my knee is rotating through it. Good. I So I have actually a little bit, I have a lot of internal rotation, but that's probably because my external rotation is crap. So don't feel like this is where you need to be because I've got other stuff I'm working on. <laughs> Probably feeling your glutes light up a little bit here, that outside hip area. And make sure that you really focus on that leg, on the leg that you notice might be a little bit tighter. How many have I done? What's the rule? One more. Good. All right, switch to the other side. The other thing your internal rotation is going to help out with is your squats. If you don't like squats because they hurt your hips or they hurt your knees, it's likely due to some um, restrictions in your internal hip rotation. getting like 10 degrees here, I want you to lower nice and slowly and just work on that eccentric movement. I 
think I'm ruining this toilet paper roll. I think it might be done for. Good thing it came in a pack of like a thousand. Alright, good. I forgot again, so we're doing one more. Ah, good. Okay, shake that out a little bit. Get up, move those legs around. We're going to come back down to an all fours position and we're going to finish with five more hip circles or five more hip cars um, just to kind of see how that's opened up some of that hip rotation. And honestly, this didn't take that long. This is a really good little routine to work on your hips every day if you can. Um, some of the harder stuff I wouldn't do every day, but um, like the sleeper stretch, just those internal rotations, that passive stretch, the hip cars, those are gonna be awesome for just working on your daily hip rotation work. Um, okay, so back to all fours. We're gonna do three and three hip cars. Notice if anything is opened up a little bit. Really watch that low back here. You don't want to be doing any cat camels while you're doing your hip circles. Pull up into that belly button, get a nice flat low back. You could even put something on your low back here to keep yourself honest. Oh, oh man, that one was hard. internal rotation being really important through your hip cars right here. So knee to chest, open out, here's your internal rotation. Turning that heel up to the ceiling and then pushing through to get some power in it. Ugh. Good. Shake those hips out a little bit. Woo. Nice work everybody. Um, let me know if you have any questions about that or if you want some additional work that you can do on hip rotation, there's a million things we could have done today. I literally just focused on the thing that most people struggle with and that will benefit you the most in your movement practice and um, just like chronic pain stuff. So if you have any other questions or um, you want some more ideas, let me know. Um, make sure, I think everybody's subscribed to my YouTube, but make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube page. And also for next week, if you want the Zoom link and I'll give you um, actual cues for your movements, um, that is on Patreon. So go ahead and uh, check that out and you can become one of my patrons. Otherwise, I will see you guys later. Thanks for coming. Bye.